Hello, my loves. Welcome back to our home base. If you're brand new, my name is Jessica Alexandria. I'm the creator of Bahati Life Apothecary. I'm a professional astrologer, tarot, and intuitive reader. Thank you so much once again. So we're going to be talking about how to spiritually protect yourself, which is so important during today's times. These are very spiritually and psychically sensitive times. I don't want to say that we're under attack because I don't like to use that choice of words but we need to up our spiritual protection game now more than ever and we need to make sure that we are reinforcing that cleansing our energy and making sure that our chakra our energy our aura is all aligned when i did the third eye and curses and how to remove them from your life a lot of the comments that i received during that time were about just please show us and teach us how to spiritually protect ourselves thank you so much for those comments thank you so much for even bringing it to my attention that you may not know to do that sometimes i get so focused on what i'm currently doing that i forget that sometimes i have to take some steps back in order to make sure that everybody is on the same page with understanding and what that may look like or these rituals these processes and for those of you guys that practice spiritual protection on the regular this would be a great time for you to revisit the different ways that you can spiritually protect yourself now and maybe even explore something that you would normally not do. Let's not waste any time. Let's just go ahead and dive right in. You guys know I like to be thorough. The first thing that I want to talk to you guys about is simple awareness. As simple as this sounds and as easy as this sounds and as obvious as this sounds, I feel like this is the biggest thing that the majority of us actually struggle with. I don't know if you can relate to this, but I feel like psychics, sensitives, and empaths, we have a tendency to try to see the best in people. And worst case scenario, we rest only in what their potential is. So when a person doesn't rise up to their highest potential, in fact, we may see the worst of them, it can really catch us off guard. This is where awareness is essential. This is where awareness is key because knowledge is power. When you understand that even the best people or the people that typically show up as their best selves, we all have a shadow side or we all have bad days or we all have our own intentions, whether for good or for bad, we're able to understand that there is no such thing as good or bad, that both of these things, good or bad, evil or angelic, can coexist in a human being. In fact, we should actually expect that. Knowing that it is normal to experience the best and worst of one person within one person is essential to you protecting yourself from being caught off guard and allows you to reinforce really healthy boundaries, especially as a spiritual being, especially as a light worker. This does not mean that you should walk around and expect the worst from people. It just means that when the worst of a person does reveal itself and show itself and you are a passenger in this moment, you're not going to be so caught off guard and so completely derailed because your protection and your boundary has already been established. When you understand that the shadow and the light aspects exist within every single human being, when you see the worst sides of a person, you are least likely to take it personally and allow your emotions to take control of the ship, of the vessel. This means that you don't allow it to disrupt your peace, AKA you are enforcing a level of protection for your mental, emotional, spiritual, and physical body. And like I said in the very beginning of this, it, it seems very simple and it seems very obvious, but I think it's the biggest, most important thing that all of us can really find ourselves struggling with and coming to terms with, especially when it comes to people that it is that we love or when we're hoping to see the best in humanity. Just to summarize this point, I don't want you guys to be fearful of how people can react and the worst that people can do because there is a lot of good in mankind. There is a lot of good in humanity, but understanding that at some points we are not all gonna operate at our, at our highest and best selves and sometimes someone is in a dark place within their life so you're not going to get the best version of them in fact you may be as a light worker as an energy healer as a being of love and light you might be activating activating and triggering their shadow self simply because you are moving some from such a higher vibration knowing that you are more vulnerable and more susceptible to this energy allows you to be aware so that again you're not caught off guard 
Let me put Franklin aside really quickly because my little Leo baby loves to have attention, especially when I'm filming. Isn't that right, honey? That leads me to my next really important point that I wanna to talk to you guys about. Every single one of us was born with an intuition and a strong sense of knowing. However, over time, and everyone's path is different, but for a lot of people, your intuition is dimmed over time by the simple fact that our parents tried to protect us from the world, from fear, or for, from us experiencing any level of pain or discomfort. The truth is, is that comfort and pain is a natural factor of life. It's just comes with the territory. And when your intuition is speaking to you that something is off or off kilter, we have to learn how to trust that instead of pretending like it doesn't exist, turning a blind eye or turning our head or trying to convince ourselves everything is okay. I feel like this is a big mistake that parents make or people make in general when they speak to their child or speak to the inner child within them and tell them and coo to them, you're okay, you're okay, everything is okay, when clearly something is off. I'm a big believer in telling children to listen to their intuition, to allow their intuition and their internal feelings to prevail and to not allow their logical and rational thinking to trump that inner sense of knowing deep within them, that gut natural instinct. Having said that, one way that you can spiritually protect yourself is by stretching those intuitive muscles now to this very day. This means that you're going to need to honor and respect your intuitive feelings as they reveal themselves as the day goes on. This means that you may have to prioritize your feelings over the feelings and the comfort of others. Learning how to work with your intuitive insight, your intuitive visions, your intuitive feelings is going to be a huge catalyst in you being able to protect yourself because the divine, your guides, your angels, your ancestors are gonna be the first ones to let you know something isn't right in the area or in the energy or at entering into your aura field. I want you guys to listen to your intuition when it comes to the company that it is that you're keeping. That means you're gonna have to listen to your vibes when it comes to the energies that your friends are putting off, your family is putting off. And if your intuition is telling you that something is off within that relationship, go ahead and trust it and don't be afraid of having to separate yourself from that other person. You're so cute, honey. I thought I put you in your bed, but you're back. Another very important thing that I want you guys to pay attention to is not only the energy of what's around you, but the energy of what is within you. This means your diet and your lifestyle. Franklin, you are so relentless today. I want you guys to be 1000% informed that when you're looking to be informed, you still have to fact check. And by fact check, I mean connect with yourself and your own intuition on the information that it is that you are receiving. Especially when you are starting or moving through your own spiritual journey, it can be an awesome resource in order to connect with the internet or social media, in order to ask what to do in certain situations, what's the best food to eat, what are the best crystals to wear, etc, etc. However, how do these things vibe with you in this moment in time? Listening to your own intuitive feelings is going to help you to protect you from spiritual or psychic attack. Why? Because you're going to totally customize a diet, a lifestyle that caters to your spiritual needs and that is 1000% going to shift as you move along. That leads me to my next really quick important point that when you are focusing on protecting yourself spiritually, you cannot indulge and engage in things that are going to energetically bring your vibe down because this makes you so open and vulnerable to psychic and intuitive attack. This means that you're gonna have to refrain from drinking alcohol in excess, coffee, eating too much sugar, fatty foods, and even spending too much time in the energetic fields channeling messages, channeling your guides over time, even that can bombard your spiritual body and you are going to need balance and also rest. Now I spent a good amount of time talking about things that are connected to your awareness, things that is that you can't necessarily see. Now I wanna talk about the things that are more tangible, the things that we can put our hands on. For example, the tokens that we carry on our bodies that invite in spiritual protection and even things like crystals. So in order to spiritually protect yourself and spiritually arm yourself, you're gonna to wanna to carry on your body or in your space, especially your home base or your, your room, your own space, spiritual talismans of protection. 
One of my favorite tokens of protection is something that I've actually tattooed on my body and is the Hamsa, the hand of God. It's so funny when I got this tattoo, I didn't totally understand what it meant, but it came to me in a vision and I knew that I needed it on my body. And this was way before I even publicly started sharing my spiritual and intuitive visions with the world. I had no idea that I would need to be as spiritually armored and protected as I need to be now. And I'm so grateful that spirit led me to get that as my first tattoo because it really helped to not only open the doors for my own blessing, but also spiritually protect me as I was moving forward into my greater destiny, my greater purpose, which is essentially what it is that I'm sharing here with you today, or at least parts of it. Even something simple, but as powerful as the evil eye totem is something that will spiritually protect you. But I really want to invite you individually to explore your own cultures, to explore your own backgrounds, and to do research on the talismans and protection symbols that resonate with you. And those things can actually change and evolve over time. I'm really curious to hear what talismans and symbols of protection resonate resonate with you right now so far along your journey what have you outgrown if any at all and I want you guys to browse through the comments and see what other people are resonating with and you might learn something today and find something that really speaks to your soul at this point along your spiritual journey the next thing I want to talk to you guys about are crystals as you guys can see I'm wearing a crystal along my neck right now this is something that I picked up at a local shop in my neighborhood that I'm absolutely obsessed with as soon as I saw it I was just like this is the one for me I didn't care how much it was I needed it around my neck that night it was the new moon I went outside I charged it with protective energy I set an intention for protection especially when it comes to my heart space and my auric field once a week I do a little energy cleansing in order to make sure that any energies that it's absorbing and that it's protecting me from are being cleansed so that this space this crystal has a high energy and I believe that the more energy that I pour into it the more energy it'll pour into me especially when it comes to protecting me at this moment in time now the crystal that I'm choosing to wear is fluorite which isn't 1000% known for being a protective crystal but I allow my intuition to guide Guide me as far as what I need along my own spiritual journey and around my own spiritual awakening, especially as someone who comes on and shares my messages with public and with the collective regularly. Everyone is going to vibe with different crystals for different reasons, and some of those reasons aren't going to 100% make sense to you. However, like I said in the very beginning, I don't want you guys to have your logical and your reasoning brain to trump your intuitive muscle, which is the most important thing I feel any person can have. The truth is, is that every crystal has a special energy. They're from different places, they have different properties, and those properties and those places can feed your soul and feed your spirit because something within you and something within it resonates and connects easily and effortlessly. This is not something that you guys should call into question. It's something that you should respect and honor. This means it's awesome in order for you to do the research as far as what crystals can protect your energy, but don't allow what the internet is saying is going to protect you to steer you away from what you energetically feel will work to protect you because just like the planets, I believe that crystals play favorites and if you guys don't know what it is that I'm talking about I use my YouTube channel regularly to post my astrological predictions where the planets depending on where they're placed within the cosmic skies at the time they place favorites or they hate on each other or they might hate on you or they might beat up on you but either way I give you an explanation of what's going on and what you can expect like I always say, if you know how to work with the planets, you can make them work for you and not against you. And I feel like the same message applies to crystals. Having said that, some of the most common crystals that you can use in order to protect your energy are black tourmaline and obsidian. Also, onyx, sapphire, ruby, and jade are some of my other favorite protectors. Now, one thing that I did mention while I was talking about the crystals is in cleansing the energy. This is not just in the objects in your vicinity that you're working with regularly, but also your body as a whole. Spiritual baths and energy healing is 1000% essential to you spiritually protecting yourself, but also maintaining balance, which is something that is often overlooked when it comes to spiritually protecting yourself. 
if your energy starts to tip in any extreme, you are going to make yourself more vulnerable to psychic and intuitive attack. You're going to need to have a healthy lifestyle, of course, but also spiritual rituals and a healthy hygiene practice that's going to work to protect your mind, body, soul, and spirit. One of my favorite ways to do that and to honor that is by taking spiritual baths and also to do an energy cleansing of your space that you work in or your space that you live in or both. Using sage and other smoke bundles such as Palo Santo are things that are common that we see in the spiritual community. But one of my most often and most powerfully used systems of cleansing my space and cleansing my body is by using floor washes as well as herbal mixes that I brew down into a deep dark potion and I use it to wipe not only my body but my floors, my walls the doors, the windows, and even the objects that I regularly work with. Now, speaking of spiritual protection, I've learned over time not to share my recipes or my rituals or even all of my altars here with the internet because as much as there are many people who have good intentions, there are a lot that have ill intention. And no matter how good of a person you are, no matter how good of your your own personal intention or your character, they're still gonna try and find a way to target you or infuse in your life some type of negative blood or poison. And the way to protect yourself from that is simply by not sharing it. So that's something that I stopped doing maybe about three years ago. I don't share my recipes online. However, what I will say is that if you do need any type of spiritual detox, floor washes, bath soaks, anything like that, you can find them all within Bahati Life Apothecary, which is where I live, breathe my magic, and share that magic with the world. Each item that it is that you order from the apothecary comes with instructions. So even if you're brand new at it, a baby, or even if you're well-versed in it, you still have well-thought-out, well-written instructions in order to help guide you through the process of protecting your auric field, your spiritual body, as well as the home or workspace that you're working in. I will say quickly that collectively, the essential oils and resins that work best with most people when it comes to spiritual protection tend to be frank frankincense, myrrh, and also lemongrass. Mix those in with Epsom salts in your bath and sprinkle in some baking soda and that will act as a really simple but powerful your energetic detox in order to cleanse your space you can use psalms from the bible or any type of written or spoken intention that you speak over the bath soak in order to bless the bath and bless the body and while you're sitting soaking in the tub realize that this is not just for relaxation and rest but also it's about spiritual protection and armoring yourself up these are not just normal baths so the intention and the mindset behind that is very very potent and powerful and i don't want you guys to neglect that so make sure that you're focusing on the intention of the bath while you're sitting in that bath which is to armor and to protect yourself from anything that is working against you at this moment in time another essential for spiritually protecting yourself is by working your magic now this can be a little tricky for some people believe it or not depending on your own personal beliefs but i'm going to do my best to factor everybody in one of my personal favorite ways of working magic and working intention is by the use of candles seven day candles this is a fixed candle that i offer in my shop whose sole purpose is for banishing negative energy banishing evil things, banishing stuff that no longer serves you, and creating a space in order to welcome in positive vibes, good energy, a new blessing, cosmic protection, angelic protection, God's blessings, whatever the case is, fill in the blank. I also like to use a white candle, which this is the base of my healing candles that I use within the apothecary. This one has not been fixed. It's because I'm completely sold out. This week, I just had a shop update and this candle specifically was sold out so fast. So this is a brand new one that I haven't fixed yet for spiritual protection or for healing. However, this is uh, the start of it. And essentially, this is what it kind of looks like at the end before you burn it. Essential oils and herbs, a special, special blend that it is that I've worked with and that my family has worked with since forever is available in the apothecary in the shop if you need it. But working your candle magic and writing in a, a petition 
for spiritual protection is actually is very very powerful if you're not someone who likes to work with candle magic you can do something very very simple and just as powerful or use it even in conjunction with candle magic and that is prayer prayer is so so powerful you guys always and forever which leads me to my next comment my next point and how to spiritually protect yourself it's by calling in entities your angels, God, the higher power, Archangel Michael, Kalima, in order to spiritually and psychically protect you at this moment in time and any time moving forward. That leads me to my next point that I want to talk to you guys about, which is using oils, resins, and certain blends in order to anoint your spiritual gateway chakra, which is can be found at the base of your neck. Believe it or not, this this chakra point at the base of the neck is something that you really need to protect because that's where evil energies or good energies can come through, through the base of the neck. If you are someone who is spiritually sensitive, if you are psychic, you're also going to want to massage this space using a protection oil. This point needs to at least have the bare minimum of protection. Just mark my words with this especially if you're someone who channels, especially if you're someone who is sensitive, especially if you're someone who is not a normie, that's what I call them, like not a normal person, that, you know, this means that you know that you're gifted, you know that you're sensitive, you know you have talents and you can see things, you can feel things, you're intuitive, you have to protect it. And I, I it's the same blend that it is that I'm gonna talk to you guys, that I talked to you guys about already. And it's that frankincense, that myrrh, that lemongrass blend. And if you can get your hands on it, dragon's blood, that is the bare essentials for what you need to have when it comes to anointing the base of the goal. I feel like when it comes to the spiritual gateway chakra that you shouldn't gamble with that ever because that can really make you vulnerable to not only the evil eye like that, the evil eye is a walk in the park, but other things such as possessions or demonic type of energy, especially right now, you guys, it's not anything to mess around with. It's something to take seriously. It's something that every single person needs to respect. And from my opinion here in America, people don't respect that enough. Now I know I'm saying a lot, you guys, and I'm shuffling the cards just because I feel like spirit is moving again. You guys know how I am, but I will try to shorten this as much as I can. And the next two points I'll make quick and easy and that is Reiki and energy work chakra clearing, which you can do by finding someone in your area who does that, or you can perform that on yourself. There's plenty of videos on the internet that will teach you how to realign your chakras and how to energetically direct healing energy back into your body in order to restabilize anything that is off and also cleanse yourself of anything that you may have picked up, any spirit baggage, anybody's bad vibes, bad juju, your own imbalances or things just kind of building up in your in all of your bodies there's a way to energy energetically just kind of cleanse that and purge that and move that through thankfully for me my mother is a reiki master and a shaman and acupuncture doctor so she taught me how to do that for myself a long time ago and when i can't do it for myself or if i don't want to do it for myself she does it for me she has a whole studio in her house where she serves her clients she serves her family and she's well known for that not everybody has access to that so i do want to encourage you to go out and support your local reiki masters your local reiki healers and if you happen to be someone who is practicing reiki or reiki master yourself Go ahead and leave your details down below in the comments and a major city that you're close to if you feel comfortable and if you're open to connecting with more clients and helping the public or if you have a YouTube channel where you share Reiki healing with the world or with the collective, go ahead and leave that down below as well. The last thing that I wanna to talk to you guys about, and I promise you this is the last thing, and that is cord cutting. This is similar to Reiki healing and energy work. It's about taking the cords, the things that we have grown attachments to, whether it be our business, whether it be a lifestyle, whether it be a relationship, whether it be a thing, and fo focusing on snipping that, cutting that, removing that so that we're free from being pulled in to that energy. There's a lot of things that, and I just happen to look down for pentacles that we may be holding on to unknowingly, or maybe we do know about it. And a cord cutting session is essential and something that I really recommend that people do often, maybe once a month or maybe off, 
If you're coming out of a breakup or anything that creates any type of pain, you 1000% should do a cord cutting ritual for yourself. But even if you're not, it's really awesome to be able to disconnect and remove anything that may have grown attached to you or you may have grown unknowingly attached to it. I hope this all makes sense, you guys. I'm doing my best as far as sharing more informative videos. If you guys have anything that you need to understand or overstand, please let me know down in the comments. I know that I am a very busy person, you know, Virgo vibes. I stay moving, I stay active, I stay trying to be of service to others. So I do have myself in a few different pots that are boiling on the stove, so to speak. But of course, you guys know that I'm here to help you. I consider myself like a big sister type of energy to my tribe, to my people. And I wanna make sure that you guys are good, that you know that you're being looked after. So if you need me or if you need to hear anything, please let me know down in the comments or you can email me at info at Bahati Life. I'm more than happy to read your emails. My assistant is always there waiting to respond and to give you guys feedback and to let me know anything that it is that you guys are saying. In the meantime, I do want to invite you to subscribe to my YouTube channel because there's plenty of more videos where this came from. King of Pentacles and I'm always here. I'm consistent and I'm stable. Virgo vibes. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye.